Thanks for joining us here at Silicon Beats. Today we're going to look at Ableton's arpeggiator. So if you're not familiar with this processor, it's a MIDI effect in Ableton's library. Uh, and it can take a bit of getting used to at first, but once you figure it out, it's fairly straightforward. So I pulled up a blank arpeggiator, and this is how it comes by default. Um, and we'll begin with style. Style basically determines the progression of your arpeggiated sequence. So right now it's set to up. So if I play a G minor chord, it will progress from the G up to the B flat and then to the D. The opposite is true if I set my style to down. It will start at the D, work down to the B flat, and then to the G. Now you have a whole slew of different choices you can choose from. Um, I recommend you reference the manual. It has some great illustrations on these different settings. Uh, but for now, we'll choose play order, which allows the arpeggiator to accept notes in the order in which they were played. Moving on to groove. Groove allows you to add some swing in the event that you want to. So right now, it's set to straight. But we can easily choose swing eight. Or maybe swing 16. So those could be useful in certain situations. We'll leave it set to straight for now. Next to that is your hold function, which basically operates as a latch. Um, so that means if I activate it and then just hit a note on my keyboard and release that note, it will still keep repeating. So I deactivate it and it stops. Your rate controls the speed of your arpeggiation, so it's set to 1 8 right now. But if we increase the rate, it speeds up, and if we decrease the rate, it slows down. Now you have two options for your rate, sync, which allows you to sync up with your master tempo, and then you have free, which allows you to adjust the rate in terms of milliseconds. Your gate controls the length of the individual notes in your sequence. So if you increase your gate, you'll have longer notes. If you decrease your gate, you'll have shorter, more pluck-like notes. We'll leave it set to 50% for now. Retriggering allows you to determine when you want to reset the pattern of your arpeggiated sequence. So this can help you create more obscure grooves, and you have two choices, beat and note. If we set it to beat with a value of 1, this means our pattern will reset on the one beat of every bar. You can see every time that yellow circle flashes, the pattern is resetting. So let's adjust this value. The note function basically allows you to reset your pattern anytime you trigger a new note. Repeat allows you to control the specified number of times your sequence repeats. Um, we'll leave it set to indefinite. And then you have offset. And this allows you to control when you jump into your arpeggiated sequence. So again, if we're using that G minor chord as an example, and we offset our value to 1, it will start arpeggiating one note higher. So it'll start at the B flat as opposed to the G. If we increased it to two, it would start at the D as opposed to the G. And you have high and low values for that. Transpose allows you to transpose the pattern you've generated by your arpeggiator. And you can do this via shift, or you can make the transposition conform to major and minor keys. So we'll just experiment with that. So it's transposing to a key of C major. We'll leave it set to shift. The steps determines the amount of transpositions that take place, 
and the distance specifies how long they are. So if we set our step to one, it will take one step of 12 semitones. Increase it to two. And we can adjust our distance. You can see how we can start to generate some really interesting patterns. Velocity allows you to add some dynamic variation to your sequence. This is great for just kind of breathing life into it so it's not so stagnant. So I can just turn that on and I can also include my re-triggering in this which will do So your decay and your target kind of work together. Um, your target is your target velocity. So the velocity you want these notes to end up at. And the decay determines how long they take to reach that target. So you can see with a short decay they reach that target much quicker. For now, we'll leave it set to about 446 milliseconds. So you see, when I reduce my target, my end velocity is much lower. So as you can see, we can create some really neat sequences using the arpeggiator. Just go ahead and experiment with these settings, kind of get used to the functions, and again, it'll come rather quickly. So this has been an inside look at Ableton's arpeggiator. Check us out at SiliconBeats.com.